Thank you for joining me this week for my conversation with Lorraine Ellen Scott, an experienced teacher and coach who helps her clients balance mental and emotional energy and in an advocate for introverts, helping them showcase themselves, embrace their true nature and shine in the business that they feel compelled to create in the world. I know you're going to love this conversation, whether you resonate as an introvert or you know someone who does. Thanks for joining us. Living in a stressful world doesn't mean you have to give up on happiness. Instead, you can shift your perspective of stress and discover how to live your life in flow. Welcome to Happified. I'm your host, Susie Vine. Join me for inspiration and interviews with folks who are shining their light in the world in the areas of positive mindset, health, and wellness. I'm so happy to have you here. Welcome back. I am so happy to have you with me this week for my conversation with my dear friend, Lorraine Ellen Scott. Lorraine helps introverts and empaths shine with genuine confidence so they can easily take the action they need to thrive in their business. With over 17 years of experience in holistic healing and teaching energy tools such as Reiki, EFT, crystal healing, and card reading, Lorraine developed her own method to empower and inspire other introverts to embrace who they really are. Lorraine lives in British Columbia and enjoys spending time in nature without her umbrella, and her happy place is playing with her crystals and oracle cards by the ocean. So I will say, if you're interested in oracle cards, you are going to have to find Lorraine on Facebook where she occasionally will do some pop-up live readings but we'll get into some of those juicy details in a minute. Lorraine, thank you for joining me today. Susie, thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. <laughs> well, I'm glad that you are. Um, I, you know, over the last few years, when we all ended up working from home, I discovered I might be more of an introvert than I thought <laughs> because I was pretty content to be safe and cozy at home. And I think it's been really interesting over these last few years to see just exactly where people landed on that spectrum. And I'm glad that you are stepping out and, you know, planting a flag to say, hey, introverts, we, we can stick together and we can honor our ways and still get some powerful work done. Um, and I'd love to know a little bit about how you came to be in this position where you feel inspired to, to help people embrace that side of themselves. Hmm. That's a really good question. Um, I've always felt I've been empathic and I tend to relate to empaths, introverts. You know, I taught Reiki for, for years and it really was when my, the last years of my marriage, I'm now separated, divorced, uh, that I realized how much energy affects me and being with a, what I term a rageaholic. I mean, it wasn't always, you know, at me, but it was ranting and raving about who knows what affected my environment a lot. I mean, a lot, which was difficult because I did teach and work from home then, even before, you know, all this stuff happened. And I needed to create that bubble of space so that it was it was sacred space and it was something that felt comfortable for clients and students to come into. And I must have done a good job because people would walk in and they'd sigh and be like, ah, it feels so good to be in this space. But it really took a lot of effort. And it, it took so much effort out of me that I didn't really do anything else. I didn't socialize very much. I couldn't really go to family functions without just wanting to just run back home and just, you know, be by myself. And I think it just took a lot out of me. And it took me a long time to figure out my way of dealing with things so that I could just be comfortable being who I am and still have the energy to do what, the things I needed to, but more importantly, to do the things I wanted to. Mm. You know, because the things we want to do are usually 
the last things we, we get to do, right? So it's important. Life, life is long and life is short, you know? It's long for the things you don't want to do and it's short for the things you do want to do. That's just the way it goes. So I just felt like, you know what? The time is now. It's time for me to just do things in my way. And the more I had that mindset, the more people I noticed, the more people I got in contact with or contacted me are feeling the same way. So it's like, we're not broken, right? We don't have to feel like there's something wrong with us and therefore feel bad about ourselves. We just need to honor who we are. So. Mm, I think that's so, so true. And I can say I'm, I'm lucky to have had the chance to get to know you through a group where we get to celebrate what makes us unique and move away from that pattern of putting so much energy and attention into air quotes for those who aren't watching, fixing what's broken right and honoring that we have gifts you know and that deserves to be a feature you know something that we shine the spotlight on um and so i really appreciate that you know that you made that shift and that you saw that opportunity to to bring others into that perspective was it early in your life that you started recognizing this this energy of you know maybe you weren't energetically or socially at the same you know level of engagement or desire to connect, you know, just that introvert versus extrovert, where did that start to show up for you? You know, I'd have to say it's in retrospect, looking back at the time, you know, in my teens or even in my twenties, I was really social. It was like everyone working for the weekend, right? You know, you want to get to the weekend. What are we all doing? But I do not look back now and I, was lucky enough, I was blessed enough to have a big group of people where we all were friends, we all went out together, or we would all go have a house party together. And I was comfortable because I was around people I knew. If I was ever in a situation where yeah, come to this party that belongs to someone else, I would stick with the people that I knew the little pods of people and, and then I would be my outrageous, you know, self. And a lot of people wouldn't think I'm introverted that way. But yeah, I have to be near familiar territory. I have to be near my comfort zone in whatever way possible. So it wasn't until later in life that I can look back and go, yeah, I, I was introverted then too. But it didn't really show because I had my peeps around me. <laughs> mm, I think that's really interesting. And I wonder if that... Um... Well, obviously is something other people have noticed as we go through different stages and phases of life, right? A lot of us stay in the place where we are from. And so we have that social group and we don't have to branch out. I moved around a lot. And so I met new people pretty consistently, but I was also, because I was moving for theater jobs with a bunch of other nomads, they were very open to making new connections too. And in more recent moves, when I wasn't in that kind of community, it's it's harder to break in. It's harder to break through. And, mm. you know, so it wasn't maybe a change in my own way of being, but just I didn't have on my own that extroverted energy to create those opportunities. Yeah. You know, it takes it really. And I know for some introverts, maybe who are listening and they're like, well, I didn't have a big group of people and I'm just by myself. It really just takes one connection with someone that you really get. And it helps if they're extroverted. You know, they, they talk about that. Have your extrovert wingman or wingwoman with you. It makes a big difference, you know, and you just kind of slide along with them. And as long as you have that familiar territory around you, you can then be more comfortable in being yourself. That's just the way that works for me, at least. And I feel like we kind of dove in, assuming that people are really fluent in this, what's the difference between being an introvert versus extrovert? Are there some kind of guidelines or ways in which you, you, you let people know, oh, you might have a little bit more this tendency or that? Obviously, everything I believe in life is on a spectrum. So I don't think anybody's 100% extroverted or introverted, but what are some things yeah, perhaps? Yeah. Well, I know there's tests out there you can take, you know, the Myers-Briggs and the uh, different different ones like that. And, and those are good. But at the same time, people take them for the Bible truth and you can't stray from that. And 
I, like you said, there's a spectrum and really there's not just a you're this way, sort of that way and kind of sort of this other thing, but it depends on the situation. It depends on the time of day or the time in your life or what you're, you know. So to me, it shifts and changes. It's, it's like energy. And truly, my meaning of introvert, extrovert is it's how we manage energy. Mm-hmm. Extroverted people gather energy from being active and around other people. And I don't mean that that they're energy vampires and they suck your energy away. It's just that they generate more energy just being around people and other, and, and it'll, it'll affect everyone around them and you gather energy with introverts. We tend to gather and get more energy by having that downtime, having time away from people, having quiet time and, and that sort of thing. And it can vary how much time we need to take depends on, you know, our health, our, mindset and that sort of thing. So to me, it's, I like to say it's not a personality trait, but it's how we manage our energy. Mm. And obviously you've spent a good amount of time working with energy. EFT tapping is one of my favorite modalities as, as obviously is Reiki being a practitioner myself. And so the more you give yourself that opportunity to open up to it and become aware of the way it moves, the more we can start to see it's not something to be resisted or, or forced, but to honor and allow. And, you know, we can really start to use it to our benefit then. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I feel that it's really, I mean, we have to sort of label things just to kind of get an idea on where things are and where things land, but we have to be open that things can shift and change. And I know a lot of introverts are told that, or, sold a bit bill of goods that you're introverted. That's it. That's how you are. Be more extroverted. That one drives me crazy. It's like said the extrovert who doesn't know what it's like to be introverted, you know, (laughs) but everybody's different. It's perspective. Really. You really have to honor who you are and not feel bad about how you feel and find ways around it. Yeah. Sometimes we have to get out of our comfort zone, but what I liked at my point of view is we can take our comfort zone with us. And I, I know an extrovert would be just cringing right now going, oh, my, you're never going to grow and succeed. But if you can take a little ounce of your comfort zone with you, that gives you something to um, help generate that energy you need to be out and around people. Because that's you can't have an adventure by staying home cuddled up with your cup of tea and your fuzzy bunny slippers as much as that's fantastic you know you gotta life is here to be let is to be lived that's that's the whole point but live it on your terms Mm. there's some juicy stuff that i want to dive into for sure but i don't want to take us too far off track (laughs) um so so since we were kind of going um along the progression of this awareness and recognizing how you can work with that energy, were there, I'd love to know if there were times when you felt challenged or ways in which you felt challenged by being an introvert. Mm, Yes. You know, and just in running my own business, like having to get out and actually talk to people. (laughs) I mean, that, that it's tough to, like I said, I was always around people that I knew that gave me my courage and comfort because I knew that they, they trusted who I am. They liked who I am, but to get out there and actually talk with people who have no clue who I am and what I do. And that can be unnerving to anybody. It doesn't matter if you're introvert or extrovert, but I really had a tough time with that. And it took me a long time to just trust who I am. And sure, I'm kind of quirky. Um, uh, And it is what it is. And I think one of the things that got me out of my comfort zone was about three years ago, when I went and I dyed my hair purple, I couldn't hide anymore. (laughs) I could not hide. I actually had people come up to me in this in the supermarket and go, Oh, I really like your hair and start asking questions. And, and that I was like, wow, I didn't realize that I did this for reasons other than just rebelling against the marriage that was 
going down the tubes or what have you, but it's purple and I'm never going back, even though it's a little faded right now, whatever. (laughs) Well, I love that too. And I do think um, as I've become an entrepreneur and started traveling down different avenues, I have found that I, I kind of create situations that force me out of my comfort zone because without that incentive or deadline or situation signing up and then well everybody's going to give a 30 minute you know 30 second introduction so i guess it's my turn (laughs) these are the things that we would probably successfully avoid or put off yes stay stuck right where we are right just like you said without you know looking for those ways in which to to grow it is comfy to stay all wrapped up and snuggled at home isn't it we can read about adventures in books but but thank you for saying like how then do we get to experience the adventure if we don't look for those opportunities so mm-hmm. I and i think what what gives you incentive what gives me incentive is thinking less about myself and how it's going to affect me and how weird and uncomfortable it is and more about Who's missing out on what it is I have to share? And I don't say that from an ego way because I've learned that every, especially in teaching Reiki is that everyone does things in their own way. We are filters of all the experiences we've learned from birth till now. And nobody does it the same way we do it. So there is always something for somebody. And if we can think about that person, we're really meant to help that really need the advice and the experience that we've had. And if we focus on that and not how uncomfortable we are, it just, it falls away. And you're you're just focused on who it is you're meant to help. And that's where the magic lies. (laughs) Mm, I think that's so powerful too, because it's easy, I think, to say, well, I don't need to go do this thing. I don't need to push myself because there are so many other coaches or teachers or people in that business. So, you know, it feels difficult. Maybe that's a sign I don't need to. That's not for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's something for everybody, right? Right. And, and like you say, I'm the right, the right teacher or the person who has the filters that align with yours so that you can really see the full potential. So do you have, um, beyond, beyond, um, seeing that, you know, there's things that we are uniquely able to share with other people that perhaps no one else can in the language that they would receive. Are there other ways in which you, you encourage or inspire introverts, um, who are struggling in that place? Like, I just can't, that's, that I'm just having trouble getting out of that, you know, invisibility cloak. It's safe here. Mm-hmm. Oh, I love the invisibility cloak. <laughs> that could be a whole podcast on its own. But um, yes, uh, end of the day, we do have to get out and be seen on our terms. Um, I feel that mindset has a lot to do with it. We get into our heads. And when we do that, we can talk ourselves out of anything. And we can talk ourselves into not being enough not having enough to say, we're not interesting, nobody really needs to know who we are. And then we can fade back into the bushes like, you know, like on the Simpsons, but um, (laughs) that meme out there. But, you know, really mindset is is one of the biggies. So I I like using um, meditation to clear energy. I love, I love tapping as we've talked about EFT tapping is a great way to clear that anxious energy that comes up in that moment just before we have to do something. Um, Also just working with our nervous system, our endocrine system Mm -hmm. through, you know, the, the chakras and, and that sort of thing. It's, it's key to understand ourselves and when we understand ourselves and what our triggers are and the things that that are going to kind of bite us in the butt, we know ahead of time, forewarned is forearmed. I think I, I, think I finally said that right this time. Yeah. <laughs> Yay, me. Uh, and it's so true, right? That we, if we, the problem is if we know ahead of time too much, we can work ourselves into a tizzy about it too. <laughs> right? It works for us or against us. So again, it's getting out of the head and getting into the heart and what matters. 
What do I really want out of this circumstance? What do I really want to share to someone? What do I really want somebody else to take away from the things that I want to share? Mm, it's so it's so important to recognize that that we can change the focus from the voices that are that chorus sometimes that might be telling us you know who are we to think to do to say to the voice that recognizes you know this is this is important this is work that I can do that can help people and um, your episode is going to be shared right after a great conversation that I had with Megan Nolan, who loves to explore the impact of the saboteurs um, from that field of positive intelligence. Well, I love Megan. She's oh. awesome. And it's, it's <laughs> so interesting. You know, when we start to recognize those voices are just voices and they have a story and they feel like they have a purpose and they're not the be all end all. We can come back to that, that sage voice, you know, and let mm -hmm. our hearts say, no, this is important. That's, yeah. that's just noise. And we can come back to that. That's really powerful. It is. And I think it's important to note too, that that voice isn't there to just trip us up, but at one point it was to protect us. So, but we have free will to determine are we being protected or is this time to stand up and stand out a little bit more? Introverts can stand out. It can happen. You know, there's lots of famous introverts in the world. So, you know, it's how you manage your energy. What do you do in your downtime? You know, makes a big difference. You know, and it's so interesting too. I think more introverts are coming out of the closet, so to speak. When I hear different podcasts or interviews, comedians, actors, uh, motivational speakers who would say, oh no, if you just saw me in a party, I would not be the one starting conversations, right? They consider themselves mm -hmm. to be introverts. But when, when they are on point, when they are doing the work that they're here to do, no one would ever guess that, you know, then they need to go back and nurture and restore and, and cultivate that energy with that alone time. <laughs> Absolutely. But and that's just it, right? They're, they're stepping up into what they need to do and they're not thinking about them themselves. So, yeah. Yeah. And I wanted to go back to something that um, you mentioned earlier. And I just know, cause I've heard you speak on this before. Um, you know, a lot of coaches, for entrepreneurs or in the business space say, you know, you got to be at the edge of your comfort zone. You got to be pushing yourself. And I think that you have a really powerful answer for that, for the introverts who are like, oh, wow, that is too much. It must not be for me. <laughs> so how, what would you have to say to the folks who are like that comfort zone? Wow, that's pretty dangerous out there. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's true. We have to get, we have to stretch our comfort zone. I think that might sound a little more doable than say, get out of your comfort zone. It's like, brr, that feels cold to me. <laughs> but to stretch it a little bit, you, we are more capable of things than we think we are. We're more resilient to things than we think we are. How many times have we thought we couldn't do something and we did it? We turn around and look, wow, that wasn't as hard as I thought it was. But I believe we can take our comfort zone with us, something, anything. I'm into crystals. I always have something within arm's reach of me. A little <laughs> crystal. You know, I've got a nice little blue crystal here, this appetite crystal. It's good for speaking. And, you know, it, some little thing, it's a little talisman that just reminds you that you are still you, even when you have to stand up and be around people and do something that isn't quite your personality. It's definitely a big, big part of it. Um, another thing you, you can do too is think about afterwards, the outcome. After you've gotten through all this, you know, the trial by fire, what's on the other end of that? Nice cup of tea, those bunny slippers, you know, it's shifting your energy. So you're focused on the thing that's going to generate it, not drain it. That's mm. the ticket. Yes. And, and honoring too, having that awareness, um, because just 
just stepping out, just showing up and speaking up could be outside the comfort zone. So, you know, for the extroverts, that's the easy part. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they've, always, yes. they've already got a half step ahead of us on the scale. So. <laughs> <laughs> But I really love what you talk about too, and I hope that people kind of think about what that could look like, because obviously everybody has something different, but how can we bring a little bit of our comfort zone with us or have some of that, you know, nourishing or nurturing practice so that when we are pushing ourselves, what, what might feel like a little bit further than some others need to go in order to be seen and heard, you know, that we've got that support in place. Well, and it comes back to what I've been talking about is like, what really matters to you? You know, at the end of the day, in five years from now, is it going to matter that you were sweating it to go stand up on stage and speak or, you know, go, you know, maybe it's, you have to be an MC at someone's wedding or, you know, give a toast, like, I don't know what it is. Is it going to matter that you were so nervous about it? Or is it going to more matter that you actually did it? And you actually were just yourself while you did it. There's always somebody that you can look at that is going to help bring comfort to you, right? If, if you're looking at a crowd of people, if you're standing on stage or something, you don't want to look for those faces that are frowning at you. <laughs> you want to find the people who are nodding, going, mm-hmm, yep, or smiling. Focus on the positive is the bottom line in what I'm saying. Negative will always be there, but it's a heavier energy. Focus on the lightness, the things that are going to get you out of your head and into your heart so you can just feel that amazing energy that's there for you. Mm. It can be that easy. It, can it is that easy. Be. It just feels completely differently, even as you're describing that. So yeah, I hope people just sit with that. Like we, we're really good at making things feel complicated and complex. So it can be yeah. that easy. I'm all about the simple. And it simple doesn't mean easy. It does take practice. And it does take a lot of self love, which means no judgy, no judging yourself. Um, it takes it takes practice. Practice is progress is what it boils down to. Marvelous. And I would love for you to share with our listeners how they can connect with you and keep gaining some of these inspirations and sparks or work with you if they feel like you're the, the kind of energy that can help boost them and push them along their path as opposed to these other coaches that are like, get out there and do it. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, there's a time and a place, but we don't want to totally freak somebody out, do we? <laughs> um, well, I have, uh, it's, it's a, a gift uh, PDF that's the introvert's roadmap that's going to help you discover five ways to tap into that inner power that you have. Simple things that, you know, are kind of no brainer. And yet to see it from a different perspective, things that we can practice that will help us stretch that comfort zone a little bit, stand in the power of who we are and just thrive in life, in business and whatever it is you do. So I'd like to gift that to your listeners. Mm, thank you. We're going to have that link in the show notes so people can get that roadmap and and really connect with the power that um that we do have within us right that and mm -hmm. nurture that innate part as opposed to feeling like we need to put all these other masks and filters on to to be more engaging or appealing to other people because the right people are out there waiting for this match yes absolutely people yeah. need who you are you know it's not about standing out being somebody else just be yourself. Yeah. I love that. And I'd love to know a little bit more too. You, you have a Facebook group. Is that where you share sometimes your card readings or where can we? Um, actually, I, on my business page as well, which is Empaths and Introverts on Facebook. And I have a private community as well, Engaged Introvert Entrepreneurs. So um, I'm sharing more there. We have some Tuesday live on zoom where we connect and 
things that come up that we need to work through this. It's just there to experiment with each other and grow as an introvert community. Community is key. It really made a difference in my life and in allowing me to grow and expand and feel like I, I have a voice just like everybody else. You have a voice, your listeners have a voice and it's okay to speak. And I think it's so important to know that there are places like this group that you've created where people can come and, and practice and start getting comfortable being visible, shining a spotlight on ourselves. You know, when we're usually very satisfied shining a spotlight on other people. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But taking that opportunity to, to put ourselves out there and find out just how much impact we can have on other people. Because when we do, when we take that first step, then others are able to to come towards us finally. Yes. And it's it's a very nurturing group, very uplifting and supportive of each other. That's so important. Every human deserves that, whether you're introverted, extroverted or not. It's just a human need for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I, I agree too. I, I really think the community is so important. Um, I, through uh, my work with Flower Essences and Dr. Bach, Bach for the British amongst us, um, <laughs> he, um, his premise or belief in the, in the importance of working with flower essences, which are an energetic remedy. They're a very subtle, um, beautiful, safe uh, modality to work with. His belief was that the um, illusion of separation was the foundation of disease. Mm. And that emotional imbalance is what keeps us feeling separate from spirit or the divine guidance, whatever you might want to call it, and from each other. Yes. And, and so, you know, all of these opportunities where we can find community, because there's lots of examples of people whose energy might not jive with ours or people who we don't easily agree with, although we could certainly cultivate that, that ability to have conversations again, another podcast for another day, <laughs> <laughs> but to, to find these communities where we can recognize that there's so much more that we have in common. That, oh, that yes. separates us. And so That's another, right. another reason too, I'm so excited to see you bringing this group together and making this place where people can come and be seen and supported, lifted up. I love it. Thank you so much for having me, Susie. I've, this has been such a pleasure. <laughs> Absolutely. And I love to ask too, before I let guests go, um, do you have any go-to, since I love to talk about living life with less stress and more flow, when you're feeling stress, now I know you've got your crystal friends standing by. We saw a couple of those beautiful stones. Mm -hmm. Are there any things that you love to incorporate to help modulate that stress or recognize, you know, when you can have a different balance with it? Well, I don't know if you know this about me or not, but I love humor. <laughs> I love laughter and I think that is the number one way for me to ground and release stress and uplift my energy. So finding something funny on YouTube or TV or, you know, a podcast or what have you, that is my way. I love laughing. It's one of my favorite things to do. Laughter is so key. <laughs> You're making me hear Will Ferrell and Elf. I love smiling. Smiling is my favorite. I always love that <laughs> line. I think that's so true and so powerful. And people, like so many practices, they can say, oh, that's, you know, can't be special enough or important enough or powerful enough. But humor is remarkable. I mean, a couple of minutes of good laughter can like totally turn your health and energy around. Energy, Absolutely. obviously, but even your health. Absolutely. Yeah, when I can bring a smile to someone's face, my job is done. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Do you do laughter yoga? Oh, I have not, but have that sounds interesting. I Maybe this introvert it. will have to spread my wings. Yoga. Yeah. Oh, well, let me know when you do and I'll definitely right. <laughs> give it a listen. <laughs> Uh, beautiful. Well, yeah, I think that you have a treasure trove of tools and, you know, I'm a big fan of tools for my toolbox between 
Reiki, EFT tapping, which is another powerful way to address stress and to clear some of those stories that come up and we tell <laughs> ourselves. And yeah. working with the crystals and even oracle cards. So, And meditation. Like, I think that is one of my very consistent things that I do every single day, at the, especially at the end of the day, is meditate, release, regroup. It's, it's really key. The more we get to know ourselves, the more we can feel comfortable no matter where we are. Truly, truly. Yeah, so many. I, the more I even begin to look into meditation, the more amazed I am at the benefits through research or just through experience, the power of meditation. But really powerful to recognize that we're not controlled by our emotions or thoughts. Mm -hmm. Just observe them. Absolutely. Thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Let them go have the party. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to sit here and be silent. <laughs> Another perfect introvert trait. <laughs> yep, I've been accused of that too, but I'm always listening. <laughs> there you go. Absorbing in some form or fashion. <laughs> mm. Lorraine, thank you so much. This has been a lot of fun. Thank you for joining me on the program. And thank we'll you. see when these other topics come back up. I'll have you back on for another conversation. That would be fantastic. Thanks, Susie, for having me. <laughs> My pleasure. Take good care. You too. Thank you for tuning in today. Check out the show notes for any links we mentioned. To learn more about living life with less stress and more flow, visit HappifiedLife.com. And if you found value in today's episode, make sure you subscribe to catch the next one and leave a review to help fellow pod surfers find Happified. Until next time, keep on shining. <laughs>